Hello, and welcome to Puppetize Live. My name is James Pogren, a senior software engineer here at Puppet. I'm proud to show you a tour of the features of the Puppet extension for Visual Studio Code. This extension was built by myself and Glenn Sardi to provide a modern IDE experience for Puppet users. Let's take a look. Here I have a VS Code window with the Puppet extension and the PDK already installed. If you need help setting that up, I covered this in a Puppetize Live session on installing and configuring the Puppet VS Code extension. I'll start here by opening up a Puppet manifest. In the lower right hand corner, we can see that the Puppet extension is already activated and loaded. Let's start writing some code. I think I'm going to try to manage a user on a target node, but I don't know much about the user type. I'm going to start by typing and see what happens. As we're typing user, you can see that the Puppet extension starts auto-completing the text. It also pops up the text box with the information contained in the doc blocks for the user type. We can scroll and inspect what the type does before we select it. This works for all the types currently in the Puppet module path. If I hit enter, the extension auto-completes a minimal statement for me with a tab prompt highlighted. I could either start entering a value here or hit tab to accept the current value and move to the next tab stop. In this case, I'm going to enter username and then ensure it's absent, hitting tab one final time to finish the template. We can hover over the user and get the same doc information we just saw, but in a formatted block with more detail. This happens for any type, parameter, class, or function that's currently loaded. We could also hover over the ensure parameter and get only the information for that parameter. As you've been noticing, the syntax highlighting is enabled by default. This is the full Puppet DSL that's supported and all expected keywords and grammar are recognized. I know I wanted to do more than just create the user, so I'm gonna add a new parameter. I'll hit comma and then enter and wait, there's an error already. Okay, what is that? Let's check the problems pane. The problems pane lists all the errors and warnings that were reported to VS Code by an extension. The Puppet extension has PuppetLint built in and runs it while you type. The errors and warnings reported by PuppetLint are consumed by the Puppet extension and added to the problems pane. While the error we see here is a minor, minor white space error, it shows that the Puppet extension will constantly check to make sure that you're writing both syntactically correct code as well as properly formatted code as you write it. We'll fix this by adding the parameter we are about to add, but I've forgotten which parameter I was going to add. Oh, I know. I'll hit Control space and get an IntelliSense list of available parameters for this type. An advanced feature like IntelliSense really helps with first-time discovery. I didn't have to open up a module README or go to a browser and go to the doc site to see this information. It was available right away. This keeps me in the IDE and productive, and I can quickly get back to writing code. Now I remember it's the group I wanted. I'll start typing, and the IntelliSense list will filter down to the one that I need. I'll hit Enter and then enter the group name that I want to use. The Puppet extension provides IntelliSense for variables, types, functions, definitions, and more. It not only works for built-in resources like user or service, but also for external modules from the Forge. For instance, I have the I Puppet Labs IIS module installed on this computer. We can see the same IIS types as if we were looking at the Forge. As long as they're in the Puppet module path, the Puppet extension will load them and provide IntelliSense and auto-completion. Now IntelliSense is awesome, but what if I need to see the code for something that I'm using? Maybe I need to know how the internals of some code works before I implement a new parameter in my manifest. I could open up another editor with the source code from that module, or I could open up a browser and go to GitHub and look there, or I could view the source directly in my editor. I can right click and select peak definition and see the code for the type that I'm looking at right in front of me. It's a small window. I can make it a little bit bigger or smaller or scroll through it and see what I need to see. If I need to, I can go and view the entire file by going to the definition. And then when I get the source code for the type right in front of me. So I've created a user and managed its group. 
I know that there's something I need to do based on which platform this user is being created on. So I'll use a fact here. I'll type operating system to get to the factor variable. And so I can pick what to do on which platform. Hmm. This should be a case statement, but I don't remember what fa value factor returns for the platform I'm on. Does it return a lowercase windows or uppercase? I can hover over the variable and the puppet extension will evaluate the value of that factor fact. Again, the puppet extension keeps us productive by keeping us in the editor and close to the code we're working on. Now this is all great if I want to type all of this by hand for the users that I want to create. But what if I already had my users set up on an example system and I wanted to quickly get them into this manifest? I could run puppet resource user from the command line, then copy paste that data into my editor, but that means moving out of the IDE and away from my task, reducing efficiency. I can instead use the puppet extension to make things easier. Running the command palette, control shift P on Windows, I can type in puppet and receive a list of built-in puppet commands. I can choose puppet resource and then type in user in the box provided. And the Puppet extension will run that command for us and output it into our current window. Now we probably won't keep all of this and we can edit and choose things as we see fit, but it gets us into a good starting point where we can work from this. At this point, we've learned how to get up to speed quickly using the Puppet extension to write Puppet code, but these are all simple examples. Let's do, try doing something a little harder. Here we have a class declaration with some types defined that sets up a website. Immediately we see some errors and warnings, and there's a lot. Let's fix that by pressing Alt-Shift-F or right-clicking and selecting Format Document. Immediately several warnings and errors are gone. We just ran puppet lint fix in the background without leaving the editor and save some time manually fixing errors. We still have one or two errors, so let's fix those. And then there we go. We saw this earlier, but it's nice to see again here being taken care of for us. This shows that with the Puppet extension, we can quickly take existing code and bring it into compliance as we review the code without much effort. Now the real world code isn't as clean. Now real world code isn't as clean or concise, and it doesn't always fit on one screen or isn't as easy to follow. Let's open up a new file and see what I mean. This is a file that has a lot going on with interdependent code. It's not easy to see what quickly what's going on. You would ordinarily have to evaluate the source and trace the code paths yourself, which could lead to human error. But we can use the Puppet extension to help us understand this code. I'm going to make this full screen and open up the command palette again. Type Puppet to see the available commands and do open node graph to the side. This opens up a data visualization of our manifest on the left. Puppet compiles the open file and generates a graph for us directly from its catalog. This is Puppet's view of the world, but presented in a visual format that we can easily follow. With the Puppet extension, we can also use it to gain understanding of the existing code and how it's interdependent. We can immediately see that these users are a member of these groups, and we can see that this computer is going to have these packages installed in this dependency graph. We're at the end of our tour now. We've seen the advanced features like IntelliSense and auto-completion for the Puppet extension, and how it can help us be more productive and effective in our coding through built-in Puppet commands. We've also seen how it can help ensure code quality while we author our manifests and help in code reviews when working with our team using Puppet Lint. With the Puppet extension node graph, we can easily see a visualization of code and its dependencies. I hope you found our tour informative and check with other P Puppet VS Code live talks on the way for using PDK with VS Code and developing manifests on different platforms.